as I promised, we do have an interview, a virtual one, because we are a very into social distancing. And we'll be talking a little bit about the quarantine, the mandatory quarantine that we have witnessed in the country. So with me is one Timothy, and I'll let him introduce himself as we get straight into the matter. Hi, Timothy. Good morning. Uh, hi, hi Timothy. Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And you? You look very well. I'm, I'm fine, thank you. You look very healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am, I, I am. You good. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, we we have to survive uh, at this time. Yeah, this time of the I, pandemic. I, it's it's uh it has united us and it has leveled us all at the same time. We are now all at the same because we must stay in the house and wash our hands. No one is at so maybe you can introduce yourself, tell us your name and what you do. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Timothy Wafula. I'm a human rights lawyer and I work with an NGO that is called Kelin, which is uh, short for Kenya Legal and Ethical Issues Network. Uh, this is an NGO that works um, around the right to health to protect and promote the right to health. Mm. Yes. Mm. yes, yes. Wow. It sounds very complicated. <laughs> yes, so for focus only on health-related human rights, uh, uh -huh. in case there are any violations around the health to, right to health, uh, mm -hmm. policies and guidelines in the health sector, that is mm -hmm. our main focus, yes, to ensure that the right to health in the constitution is protected and promoted, yes. All right, so by just the by mere fact the that we're having this conversation means somewhere, some, somehow out there, there's, there's been a violation of human rights. And that's what we're here to address. Yeah, yes, so our main concern uh, in the, in, in, uh, recently has been around mandatory quarantine. Uh, you remember that uh, when the pandemic uh, was first uh, announced in Kenya, uh, later on, the government took measures, and some of these measures included uh, introduction of mandatory quarantine for all persons who are coming out of the, of the country. And okay. yes, that is a very good measure. We have to okay. say that uh, because it's a public health measure that is uh, trying to prevent the spread of 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 of, of COVID. We understand how how infectious COVID is, and uh, also the need to ensure that all measures are put in place. To, to prevent further spread of, 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 of the virus in the country. And mandatory quarantine was one of such measures that was introduced. And um, yes, so as I've said, it's a, it's, it's a good measure, public health measure, whose objective is just to ensure that uh, people who might have been exposed to the virus are, um, are, are separated from the rest of the population. And uh, when they're separated, the purpose of the separation is to monitor their health, mm -hmm. uh, to check if they are okay uh, in cases that uh, there are symptoms, there's early detection and mm -hmm. treatment is as soon as possible. So it's just to ensure that this person stays away from the population, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the main purpose is for health specific purposes monitoring and detection mm. of, 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 of possible uh, infection. Um, however, we've had some concerns from individuals mm. who are now in mandatory quarantine. Mm. They have reached out to our organization. They have shared uh, via social media. Uh, they have shared via video links and so many other um, uh, uh, platforms that mm the implementation of this mandatory program, a mandatory quarantine program, mm -hmm. is not being conducted in a manner that uh, safeguards their health and, safe, and, 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 and well-being. So okay. one, okay. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So yes, so there was some concerns immediately. Our passengers arrived at JKIA. Mm -hmm. They started mm -hmm. raising concerns, how they were bundled into one bus, and uh, we know that COVID, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are promote social distancing. People should not be in crowds. So how they were transported from the airport, then taken to the, to the mandatory quarantine center, they had concerns and they raised, and they, they said that this should be improved if we have to prevent uh, further spread of COVID. And uh, also, they have also shared concerns and say that, quarantine mm -hmm. um, they are 
for the services. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this one is also an issue that to some of them, they feel uh, the government needs to take responsibility because mm -hmm. it's not only for the personal benefit, but for the benefit of the country that this program is, it's, it's being, it's being, it's being, it's being is being implemented. So there are cost implications that they have raised concerns about and also just the general condition of some of the quarantine facilities. Okay. So that is how we came into the conversation after hearing all this. Oh, maybe if I may, because it, it, it's a bit dangerous to, to blame or point fingers at the government for not being very prepared because COVID-19 kind of took the world by storm. There is no country or president or government that has prepared for this prior. There's no one who has, you know, resources just set aside for such a pandemic. So first of all, maybe we should give credit where credit is due. Thank you for doing what you can, dear government, and thank you for directives. And then in the same breath what what kind of grievances are we looking at are we looking at someone who's lonely maybe 14 days in in, in quarantine is, is that a real problem are they lacking food are they lacking basic resources are they being given information do they know what's going on do they know how many active cases there are do they know how many recoveries there are what's really going on on the ground okay thank you thank you affected and i is grappling with the conventional point fingers and in later there's some level of improvement so yes so, 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 so some 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 of the concerns that um uh we that 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 have been raised one is just to have the government uh develop a guideline to uh to to, to, to and uh, the guideline has actually been developed a mandatory quarantine guideline that just say states what is supposed to happen in quarantine, uh, what are the measures to ensure infection control, to prevent further, uh, pre uh, further f f uh, to prevent further spread and, and such issues. So that was one of the aim uh, of our interventions that we need to have a proper guideline in place and a policy in place that will guide implementation of the mandatory quarantine process such that, and the importance of this is so, the rights of people, because people who are in quarantine also still have rights, their rights are respected. So it needs, and if this happens within a proper framework, then the likelihood that their rights will be guaranteed and respected are higher than if it's it's conducted in a haphazard and uncoordinated manner. So some of, of these uh, uh, concerns post implication. So at one point, the current mandatory quarantine for people who are in quarantine right now was extended by a further 14 days. So for most of them had planned to stay in quarantine for 14 days, but later on the government issued a circular that this has to be extended for a further 14 days because they were not sure that some might have come in contact with people who are tested uh, COVID positive. So whereas the people who are in quarantine were not contesting them being uh, in, in, in a nice in, in, in further quarantine, they were just concerned about how this information was being shared. That mm -hmm. yeah, they were just hearing from this uh, about this from the media, just the, like the rest of us, and they are the main affected people. They were concerned about the further uh, costs of the extra fourteen days given that they, all of them have to pay for their bills. They were mm -hmm. concerned that the longer they stay in quarantine and if the conditions are not improved, the management is not good. They mm -hmm. are even risking, it's, 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 it, for them, they were saying this, it, it becomes more risk that chance that you will get infected while in quarantine become higher as mm -hmm. opposed to you being, being outside, of which that should not be, be the case. So some of them have also had concerns about the mental, health they are saying yeah we need we need we need we need uh, uh the mental health of everybody who is in isolation to be taken care of and of course now the other main important bit being about they had concerns around the testing so testing the concern was that uh 
testing, there were there were delays in getting mm -hmm. testing results. So for them, they were saying, if we are going to get out of here, we need mm -hmm. testing to be very prompt and results to come promptly, not to be delayed uh, by the time the results are back, uh, things have changed and all that. And also that if uh, there are any extensions of uh, mandate uh, of quarantine, it should uh, affect people who have been in close contact of those who have turned uh, COVID uh, uh, positive. Yeah, so that was that, and not a blanket extension for everybody. Uh, so just the government needs to put in place measures to closely monitor everybody so that they're able to tell who has come in contact with a person who has tested positive, who has uh, gone, who, who has tested negative and has been uh, quarantined in the, uh, through following all the uh, right the, the quarantine procedures and should be discharged yeah so that that was those were the main concerns so for now they're saying the, the concern has been if this continues this way it might be an indefinite uh quarantine of which it should not the purpose is to monitor the health ensure somebody comes out negative and mm -hmm. uh if you are positive you are treated and taken for for treatment so th those are some of the concerns here i imagine the grievances for lack of a better word that i've been hearing uh, from people on the ground who are practicing self-isolation or they're staying at home is especially people with very large families are are not okay you know all the kids are home all the grown-ups are home so it, it's it's a bit strenuous on them as a family with their own resources at home so i can only imagine now incurring other costs while somewhere else and it is not of your own volition it is mandatory and, and you can't really refuse because you know it's it's healthy it's it's good like you must be quarantined to make sure that you're not uh, a threat to anybody else and as I am seeing it quarantine doesn't mean that you have tested positive for COVID-19 it means either you are suspected or you're displaying such symptoms so when you're placed in quarantine you might actually have a risk of, of getting cross-contamination or however they put it but now translating to uh, what the government said they said they'll have a a method or a way to conduct mass testing very soon in a few weeks or I'm not too sure in a few days but what does that mean for us when we now begin mass testing is it are we going to be all mass quarantined are we going to have the same kind of problems but now at a, a horrible blown up level that what what do we expect thank you so with um with 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 them um, with covid uh the message from the government is that we need to isolate themselves if you are display uh, or to avoid uh, social places and all these uh, issues so uh with the the mandatory quarantine program mostly it targets people who had suspected to have come in close contact uh, with a person who has te tested COVID positive. So these, maybe those who will go into quarantine are people, for example, in a household, if one person tests positive, then maybe the others need to be taken to a uh, mandatory quarantine. But that, that should not, uh, I think that, that, that uh, the mandatory quarantine should, it should not be like that's the routine. So if these people have a way of uh, self-isolating in their homes. Also, the guidelines allow for that, that you can have self-isolation in your in your house, you can quarantine yourself in a facility, in, 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 in any other place. So the instances where the, the mandatory quarantine comes in is in extreme, we can say, we can say, should be as an extreme measure that this is a person who no longer, who, who cannot self-isolate, yeah, they have come into close contact. We need to closely monitor them and, and such issues. And it can only happen at a, a certain facility. So those are the so maybe we should not have concerns that with mass testing, then everybody will have to be taken to uh quarantine facilities. No, the message will be you are already isolating yourself at home. So if the mass testing happens. Uh, people, some close contacts are found to be positive. Those who are, uh, have come into contact with them, they're encouraged to self-isolate. And they, if they can show that 
there is their measures within which to self-isolate, then they, that that one proceeds. So, so, so those are the concerns. But, but of course, those are the, those are good those are good questions that you are raising. So, from a citizen's point of view, what we'll be asking the government is how many, for example, quarantine facilities are there. If I'm taken to a quarantine facility, what should I expect there? So, for instance, I pay for my cost. Why, why is the government not pay for my cost? Will I will I be given food? Will there, will there be good hygiene? Will there, will there be water? Uh, how many times will I be tested at the quarantine facility? How many healthcare workers are in these quarantine facilities? So what's the difference between a quarantine facility and my home, for instance, uh, if I am able to, to self-isolate in, in my home? Uh, what are the measures like? Are, are the healthcare workers in the quarantine facilities? Do they have adequate protective um, protective equipment or the protective gear that they've been talking about? If it's hotel staff, uh, are they also protected? So some of those are some of the questions. So for instance, if, so if I have a pre-existing condition, say cancer, HIV, TB, and I'm in this quarantine facility, how will that be taken care of? So those 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 are the those are the legitimate questions that we are asking right now that the government uh, proactively shares with the people. People are well prepared. People know that it's only at this instance that I might I will be required to go to mandatory grant. Uh, it's options that are available: uh, self isolation, uh, isolation at a health facility, for example. Mother. So all these people should have all the information about all these options that are there. So those, 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 those are some of the things. And our messaging or what we, we've been advocating for is that the government needs to take up this responsibility. It needs to proactively share the information. And uh, because quarantine is being undertaken as a public health measure to protect the entire public, we should support people who are in quarantine and not create an extra burden to them, for instance, through the costs, through give, putting them in some deplorable conditions. No, let's take, resp let's us as the government take responsibility for them, because if when they come out negative, it, it's a win, it's a win for, for all of us as a country and for the, for the person. And we should ensure that we are providing maximum support to, 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 to them. So yes, so that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like you read it. Because the next question I was going to ask you is what maybe do you think the government should do? But I, I like that. I like the op keeping open communication, making sure that the facilities are, you know, habitable for the yeah. time that quarantine is necessary. But I have a question yeah. for you, maybe in conclusion. Yeah. There is a very, very large number of Kenyans who live below the poverty line, you know, and self-isolation means no food that day because, you know, it's, it's, they largely rely on their hands or movement or things like this, basic, basic things. And I'm not speaking French. This is something that we know. We are Kenyans in Kenya, right? So what does that mean for maybe someone like me if I stay in the home then I don't I don't get to trade I, I won't get to eat that day but now you want me to self-isolate or self-quarantine or even worse now you're telling me mandatory quarantine how how can we convince or how can we cater for the destitute because they exist this is a very real problem yes yes very very true and uh, yes and that's another messaging that we've been trying to encourage that the measures that are put in place have to look into all the existing conditions that are there. It has to cater for everybody. It has to cater for for the vulnerable, the marginalized people in uh, informal settlements, uh, people everywhere, able, everybody. So uh, people with pre-existing conditions. So everybody must be catered by, by, uh, for in these, in these policies or guidelines that are there. And in implementation, of the guidelines, it should not be blanket. It should we should be looking for case by case basis. Yeah. So the main thing that has to be out is this information, these guidelines around the quarantine gram. What's mm -hmm. what's 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 in what's this quarantine that we are talking about, and at what point does somebody, uh, is somebody for example, uh, required to be in quarantine? And um, if we are having these 
So now, now my my other message, the pro, uh, the issue of supporting the, the people, everybody to be supported. So for instance, you will not, uh, everybody cannot pay uh, pay for for, for, for for the quarantine. And if we continue saying that we, these quarantine facilities, you have to pay for you to be accommodated there, then there's a very big population that will not be able to afford uh, the quarantine. And it's not for their, it's not just for, about them, it's it's us as a country, we are fighting this pandemic together. So we need to have in place mechanisms that ensure that everybody in a mandatory quarantine, whether it's a mandatory quarantine, whether it's a self-isolation, whether it's a, uh, any other quarantine program, that mm -hmm. their needs are met, that they are properly catered for cost-wise, hygiene-wise, food-wise, and all their needs are met and that we are not violating their rights by having them in quarantine. People people should not fear. They should know that this is a beneficial program for me. I should not be uh, thinking that uh, being taken to quarantine is a punishment. No, it's not a punishment. You are not you are not a criminal in any way. You are the, the, the objective is a public health objective to ensure your health and the health of the society. But if we pass a message in as if this is a, a, a criminalized uh, issue, it's a form of punishment, it's some um, punitive measure, mm -hmm. then that is the time that you now have experiencing challenges people are adhering to, for example, what is now introduced. So that is that is the main messaging and supporting everybody regardless of their of the um, of their status, uh, just following the constitutional principles, non-discrimination, uh, protect and, 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 and rights, dignity, health, and, and all that, yes. What can I do? What can As I do? an individual to maybe, I don't know, help the process, uh, get information going. I believe everyone has a part to play. What do you suggest that I can do to help in this particular situation that we are highlighting? Thank, Thank you. you. So, so I will say, as as as, as individuals, as, as the community, we should not. Uh, we should always be proactive in pushing the government to do the right thing. We should not stay back and just let things happen. Seeing something may be going wrong, and saying, "Hey, let's not speak about it because it's a hard time for everyone." No, we have these rights to ask the right questions, to ask that proper measures are put in place because. Uh, if if it if it becomes a bigger issue, we want everybody to be we want everybody to be protected. We don't want we, we, it's, it's, it. This is not a time to say, hey, let those ones deal with money. At all of us to uh, to speak up, push for information, support wherever we can, and 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 and, and uh, provide the right information to the to the public about what is uh, happening uh, uh, around the the, the, the programs. Okay, thank you so very much Timothy. for the riveting conversation. I think I've learned a lot, and no, the viewers you. at home have it as well. And I believe we shall overcome. And you want your hashtag? Hashtag we shall overcome. Mm. We shall overcome. Yes, 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 we will. We will definitely. Thank you. Also, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Have a wonderful day. And wash your hands. Okay, thank you. Anita. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very okay. much. Why in the morning, viewers, we just had a conversation with Timothy, and we're talking about quarantine and those who are already currently in mandatory quarantine, their grievances, and maybe possible solutions. So what we are going to do is going to take a short musical break, and then we'll be back with interview number two. You don't want to miss it.